Hi everybody, I'm Naresh Raja. I'm a portfolio chief data and AI officer with previous experience with Barclays Bank, uh, Lloyds Banking Group, and Danske Bank. I'm also a board advisor with Softisteria and Data for Good, and an innovation expert at Oxford University. Analytics has just made a massive difference in banking transformation in the last five to 10 years. And that's been based around really understanding clients and customers much, much better. And what Analytics has done, and this is where being data-driven comes from, is about actually making decisions using analytics. And I've worked around boardrooms and executive committee tables. And what's been quite telling is having a story told through analytics with real facts and figures and the story behind that makes a massive difference both at the executive and board level in terms of actually making decisions count but also in terms of actually the thinking that everybody in the organization in a bank starts to do being data driven really thinking about the impact on the customer but being able to prove that with facts and figures and data is a huge change in the industry and it's it's a welcome change Now, this is a really, really interesting position around predictive analytics and also really making sure that customers are getting the right solution, which is personalized for them. So one of the things in the banking industry we've been struggling with is could we be really focused on hyper personalization so we absolutely understand a customer? So Naresh Raja, my age, my, my type of spending habits, what I would like, what my transactions are, and being able to offer the best savings, lending, and other products to me as an individual. And, and the same in terms of thinking that through long term of how do we actually build that relationship with the customer. And the age old challenge has been really the movement from segmentation, which is actually segmenting based on a range of things, to micro segmentation, which is being able to really narrow down that segmentation, depending on a sort of characteristics like we talked about, you know, age, gender, where someone leaves, lives rather, to then personalization and then hyper personalization really is around being able to really understand the customer, the individual, and also what the customer wants in the future in terms of products and services and the customer journeys that needs to be created to facilitate that customer's wants and needs. And this is where predictive analytics makes a massive, massive difference because you're able to actually understand that individual customer through historical data sets, but also being able to predict what the financial needs of that individual are, financial product needs of that individual are through really accurate analytics and assessment, again, through AI and also the analytics that underpins that. And importantly, the data and really strong, good quality data that needs to exist to be able to facilitate both prediction and analytics. The focus on operational efficiency and customer experience really depends on how, and we, in terms of a straight through process. And uh, multiple years ago, I've worked in institutions where it actually takes a, quite a long time to service a customer because you don't have that up-to-date data and interaction history in a really clear way at your fingertips. And that creates quite a lot of concern for customers. It actually increases complaints, but also more, more importantly, you're not fulfilling the need of an institution in, in supporting a customer through that journey. And so both in terms of really thinking through real time support. Now we're seeing more and more the advanced uses of chatbots to be able to understand that. And what, what's happened in the last three to four years, and especially with the explosion of generative AI, is the end-to-end -end omnichannel experience has just improved significantly. So if we think about the data and the interaction history that banks tend to hold about customers, you're able to work out very quickly through the interactions through a chatbot, what type of help or support a customer really needs, and then really be able to actually narrow that down with regard to what I would call a happy path, when you would actually move through that process and the customer is satisfied with whatever help they're looking for. Or you're, you're moving into variations and exception processes, which the complexity increasing on that. The trick where generative AI has really helped is be able to figure out pretty quickly what is the happy path for 80% of customers who can self-serve and then how do you make sure you're able to get 
customers who really need help, for instance, around fraud is a prime example, or they really are dealing with bereavement, or they have a really knotty complex transaction they need to actually interact and solve. You're able to get customers to the right place very quickly. You're looking to do that in terms of with the minimal amount of handoffs. So going from an automated agent into a customer service number one into a specialized customer service, trying to minimize the handoffs and minimize the time that the customer is waiting. And that's where it's the impact can be huge in the advances the industry has made, both in terms of having really effective, clear data, and then the models and fundamentally the agents that have now been deployed to be able to serve customers better. This is the age or problem that we have faced in financial service and banking in particular is in terms of innovation, privacy, innovation, regulation. And there are many that say one has to trump the other. Innovation has to trump regulation or no, you need to be more um, aware. As a chief data officer who's been in multiple banking organizations, I always believe in the balance between defense and offense. So fundamentally, if you get the foundations right and with the right ethics, the right positioning, the right values, you're going to be able to create huge amounts of innovation whilst ensuring you're protecting customer rights, customer privacy, customers' data, etc. So let's bring that down to the, the whole position. And that, that's huge in terms of, well, that's the case in terms of innovation and regulation and, and controls is really establishing that balance which really should be about serving the customer and improving the customer's experience and customer journey all the way through. If we think about innovation and privacy, and this comes back to the, the conversation we were having earlier when we talked about how challenging it is to get to hyper-personalization but respecting privacy. And that, that is an age-old challenge. And the way through that is really being clear, which is what is your real position on data ethics, what is the real clear position on AI ethics? And what is your positioning on data privacy? And not just from a, we need to do this because of GDPR, but what does the institution really truly believe in, in serving customers? And in organizations I've worked, I've been fortunate, but from the very top, we've had very clear messaging and very clear positioning in terms of how we would set out our privacy, our data protection, our data governance and data management to ensure that whatever we do with innovation is doing the right thing. And so if we take the point around predictive analytics and how do you make sure that privacy is safeguarded, but you're also able to enable innovation, it really comes down to consent. Now, you need to have the right consent to be able to do that. I think most, if not all organizations will subscribe to that. The second part then, what really needs to be worked through with innovation is, you know, we, we sometimes sit around the table and talk about the creepy factor. You know, how far does it extend when it becomes creepy? Because yes, you might be able to do something quite innovative, but how would the customer really feel about that in terms of the interactions? So there's a fine balance to be struck, which is you want to do the right things under consent. And then when you are hyper-personalizing, you need to put it into the voice of the customer. And that's really, really fundamental voice of the customer to say, if this was something as a product or a marketing campaign that the customer receives based on hyper-personalization, would they see this as a positive element in their customer journey and their relationship with the bank? And one needs to ask that question every time when a new product or new service is designed to be able to do that in the right way.